were chairman, at the same time the canal was being constructed, a number of defensive locations were developed to protect it, both with coastal defense guns as well as military bases to defend against the direct infantry assault. Port Sherman was the primary Caribbean side infantry base. Construction of Sherman began in January of 1912 as part of the 1910 defensive plans. The fort included 23,100 acres of land, about half of which was covered by jungle. The developed areas, mainly on Toro Point, included housing, barracks, small airstrip and various recreational areas, as well as coastal defense uh, batteries, which were located down on the Caribbean coastline. Fort Sherman was always the most isolated of the military posts in the canal zone. It is bordered on one side by the Caribbean, on another side by Limon Bay. It has Chagas River run through it, and once the Gatun Locks and Approach and Gatun Lake were constructed, it was cut off. In the early days, the children were loaded on boats and taken over to Cristobal to attend school. At the end of the school day, they would get back on the boat and come over across to Fort Sherman and home. Reportedly, Fort Sherman was used for testing and disposal of chemical and biological agents. Fort Sherman was turned over to the Republic of Panama in 1999. The first area we'll look at is uh, Fort Sherman enlisted housing area. Uh, this is what was reported by Eric Dezekin. Uh, he noticed that um, uh, there were a number of uh, suspicious looking barrels that were being used as a barricade. And uh, uh, the enlisted housing area, as you can see here, had had and still has a uh, jungle on one side and the shoreline with the uh, Limon Bay over here. And if you pull out a little bit, you can uh, see S2 Road that comes in here. Uh, the gate is located in this area. Um, we have a number of photos here that I will uh, show you. First is the uh, uh, 1969 view. And as I mentioned, it's a lower resolution and therefore you don't get as much detail, but the area we're talking about is right here. And uh, this is Libon Bay and the breakwaters with the opening for the canal shipping. And this is a fragment of a canal zone map. And once again, over here are the barracks that we're talking about. And uh, next is a photo of uh, one of the barrels that Eric took on March 1st, 2020. And these barrels were lined up in front of the old enlisted uh, quarters and they had like a steel cable that was uh, attached running down uh, there. And you, you can see there's a number of them right here in a row. Um, I did go uh, back and I looked on YouTube and I looked for uh, <clears throat> some uh, uh, videos that people had taken driving uh, through Fort Sherman. Uh, in other words, I had like a camera mounted in the, in the dash of the car and so forth and uh, uh, recorded what they saw. And I saw one that was from uh, 2014 and they came down the street here. And at that time, there were no barrels. Uh, I was down there in February of 2020, uh, shortly before Eric, and I noticed the barrels at that time. So... They were installed um, sometime between 2014 and February of 2020. And uh, due to the 
remoteness of for Sherman, it's uh, uh, probable that these barrels were found either buried somewhere on Fort Sherman or in one of the old batteries somewhere. Uh, they are quite rusted, as you can see. Um, again, here is a picture of these barrels in the line. And uh, uh, my Spanish is not great, but uh, this sign is saying, uh, something to the effect that uh, no entry and this is a property of the state. There's a close up of uh, one of the barrels, quite rusted. It does have a, an orange band on it and uh, each one of them has a green data area. This is a view taken in uh, either the late 60s, early 70s by Edwin Armbruster. Um, this is the housing area. And as I said earlier, there's jungle on one side and the shore of Lehman Bay on the other. I'm gonna arm Brewster of the housing area. The next area is along the, uh, uh, the old airstrip at Fort Sherman. And uh, that would be this right here. Excuse me, if I pull out, you can see the uh, old airstrip and taxiways and so forth. And this is located right in here. Now, in addition to um, Eric spotting a, a, another barrel here, um, there's also a TTC tropical test center map that was uh, uh, we were able to find. And on that, that shows that uh, this vicinity was used for uh, open field testing uh, for uh, material exposure. And again, I have uh, a number of uh, photos I can show. Again, the 1969 map, we're now looking here. Um, the fragment of the canal zone map, and we're looking over here. Uh, this is the TTC map, and uh, uh, we're talking about item number 21, which is the materials exposure site open field. Uh, this is Eric's photo. Again, you can see the rust barrel with the orange band and the green data area. Um, on the other side of this grass is the old airstrip, and in the background are barracks that are be currently being used by uh, Panama. Um, another photo by Edwin Armbruster, uh, same time period, late 60s, early 70s. Here are the barracks lined up. Um, here is the airstrip, and that barrel picture is from over here. And as you can see at that time, this area has been kept pretty, pretty clean and open. Uh, there's the enlisted housing area we looked at last time. Another photo by Edwin in the same uh, period. And um, the barracks, this is Shelter Bay. And uh, here's your runway. And the photo was over here again. You can see this, this area has been kept pretty clean. Next area we're gonna look at, um, I added based on the TTC Tropical Test Center map that I found. And the way I was able to locate it was uh, based on distance from S2 Road. S2 Road comes in from Gatun Locks, runs along here and runs up to Fort Sherman. And their map shows um, access through a, uh, it was probably a two lane rutted road that came down through here. Uh, and this, this here is Limon Point. And here is that 1969 view. And again, this is where we're looking and you can see S2 Road. Here's Limon Point. And this uh, was classified as tropical test center as a dense jungle site. 
uh, and there it would be on there. You can see the little access road coming in from S2, and there's Limon Point. Okay, we have another uh, area that I added uh, based on the uh, TTC um, map, and this one was classified as a materials exposure site modified jungle. And uh, if I pull back some, you can see that where we're located is, uh, here's the main part of Fort Sherman, the barracks we talked about, the enlisted housing, the airstrip. And um, if you've ever been to Fort Sherman, you know that there is a gravel road that uh, called S8 Road that comes off of the main part of the base and runs down um, runs down here and past some of the old batteries and eventually gets to uh, um, Fort San Lorenzo. And this right here is Devil's Beach. Devil's Beach had a little rutted road that came out to S8 Road. So we're talking A28 here. And that's located right here on our 1969 view. There's Devil's Beach. You can faintly see S8 Road coming down here. And so here we are. We're number 20, the uh, modified jungle testing site. Next location is uh, one of the old coastal artillery positions that was uh, um, first known as Shaggers 1, but then known as Battery Pratt. And uh, it was converted from a coastal gun battery um, to an, a, an executive evacuation point. And it also had uh, comps links in here uh, that connected uh, the canal zone with CONUS and, and other, um, other comms links. And if I back out, you can see it's, it's kept pretty clear, but it's surrounded by dense jungle. Um, the way these batteries worked, uh, the gun positions were back here but they would have observers out here, which would uh, direct the guns and so forth. And um, they were able to get back and forth. They had uh, either walkways or whatever. Uh, in the case of Battery Pratt, I know what they had was an underground tunnel that ran out of here that uh, allowed them to get back and forth. Um, the... Uh, 1969 view, it's A22. You can see that it's, it shows clear. Uh, you can see S8 Road coming down here. And just off the map here is Fort San Lorenzo. And this is, um, this is actually a picture at the Battery Pratt Observation Post. And this was taken sometime in the 1920s. And uh, you can see you know, faintly see, you know, they went down here to get in the tunnel to get back to the battery that's in the background. Uh, this is a photo from 1973, and this shows one of the entries into the, to the battery. And as you can see, the tops and around were kept clear of uh, vegetation. Now, um, I mentioned S2 Road earlier that, that runs from uh, Gatun Locks out to Fort Sherman. Uh, it was a two-lane paved road, and it had uh, um, shoulders on the side. They uh, were clear, and they were big enough that uh, you could pull a car off and be totally off the road with, with a couple feet on the side of you. Uh, S2 Road, all the way out, ran through uh, either jungle or uh, mangrove swamps. And if I pull out a little bit, you can, you can see what I'm talking about with the terrain. This spot, this is just lighter green as a result of exposure of the, uh, uh, the satellite view. 
Now, I picked this particular location because um, the road came down here and it made two pretty, pretty close to uh, uh, 90 degree turns, one here and one there. And this entire area here was open. Uh, there was no, it was swampy, but there was no uh, tall vegetation at all, uh, which meant that as you were coming here, you could be able to see traffic coming the other way and so forth, uh, trying to avoid any kind of uh, collision in the middle. Uh, 1969 view, you can see this is the point we're talking about. And again, that would be down just right off of this area in here. I'd like to thank veteran Richard Wyman for putting together all of this information on possible places to test in the Panama Canal Zone. I'd like you to all come over to the Military Veterans Advocacy and join with us today. We are further than we have ever been before. We have a rulemaking request that's been granted by the VA Secretary. We have an HR 5026 bill for Panama introduced into the Congress. And we could not have done that without the Military Veterans Advocacy and the leadership of Commander John Wells. There's also a ton of information under the Veterans of Panama Canal that we have submitted to the VA Secretary who granted our request. So this information might be able to help you in your claims. And if you need help with an attorney, if you're at the appeals level, uh, use our contact button and contact our administrative staff and they can guide you for help.